this week's Mustard Seed online service. My name is Anne and I'm a member of Mustard Seed. I hope that your week has gone well and you're looking forward to our time of worship together. I also hope that you've known God's peace this week. This week saw us reach the first anniversary of the start of lockdown measures. It hardly seems possible that we've lived with COVID restrictions for a year. It has been 12 months of extreme challenges for everyone and there's no clear end in sight. Despite the hardships, however, we've a lot to be thankful for because God has been with us each step of the way and continues to love and support us. In the last few weeks, we've been on a journey exploring who Jesus is as we mark the weeks in the run up to Easter. Today is Palm Sunday and many of you will remember church services and school assemblies where as children we waved palm branches to recreate the crowds gathered in Jerusalem. Although in Scotland, palm branches in March were in short supply so anything large and green was used. Later, Tony will read a very well-known Bible passage where Jesus surprises the gathered crowd by entering Jerusalem on a donkey. The crowds were waiting for their new king, the much longed for Messiah. They expected him to arrive in splendor. So why did he arrive on a donkey? Later in our service, Andy will answer this question as he explores our reading from Mark's gospel. We also welcome Myra, who will lead us in our prayers and we look forward to some music led by Ali, Stephen and Liz. Before we start, however, let's pray together. Loving God, give us joy in our hearts as we shout Hosanna, welcoming Jesus our King with palms, celebrating all that we hope for as the Easter story unfolds. Be with us as we share in worship together and explore your inspired and holy word. Then in the week ahead, as the journey of Jesus turns towards Good Friday, Help us to know that you're with us when rejoicing turns to sorrow. Give us the faith we need to follow you on the way to the cross, which ultimately leads to forgiveness, love and new life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gather as a people, we know there are many fears that tug our hearts and minds, but we choose to set them on the floor before us here and call down God's blessings on us in our shared life together. My sister, my brother, we sing deep peace. Deep for Mark chapter 11, verse 1 to 11. The triumphant entry into Jerusalem. As they approached Jerusalem, near the towns of Bethphage and Bethany, they came to the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a coat tied up that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if someone asks you why you're doing that, tell him that the master needs it and they will send it back at once. So they went and found a coat out in the street and tied the door of a house. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders asked them, what are you doing untying that coat? They answered, 
just as Jesus had told them and the bystanders let them go, they brought the cloak to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the animal, and Jesus got on. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches on the fields and spread them on the road. The people who were in front and those who followed behind began to shout, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the coming kingdom of King David, our father. Praise God. Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple and looked around at everything. But since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with the 12 disciples. Well, hi, Mustard Seed. I hope this finds you well. Um, my name is Andy, if I've not met you before, and it's great to have the chance to share with you today on Palm Sunday. Um, now, if you've been around uh, any church for any length of time, um, I'm sure you have memories of family services on Palm Sunday, uh, when various people play the different roles and the congregation all wave their, their palm leaves and someone pretends to be a donkey and someone pretends to be Jesus going through Jerusalem. Um, it's Sundays like this, which, it would, you know, it would be really good to be together. Um, and alas, here we are over a year later and we're still um, doing services like this. Um, but I hope uh, as we consider what is a really familiar passage in the Gospel of Mark today, um, that we uh, might have some memories from uh, past services, uh, past reenactments uh, of the, the Palm Sunday procession. Um, or uh, we might have new insights uh, on this really familiar passage. Um, so pray that God um, will be speaking to you today. A question to start with, um, and that question is, what do you think of? when you hear the word king. So take a moment to think uh, what immediately comes to mind when you hear the word king. Uh, here's a list of some of the things uh, that came to my mind uh, when I paused uh, to think about this earlier. Royalty, riches, a crown, a golden crown with uh, rubies and gems uh, built into it. The royal family uh, in Britain, uh, of course, uh, includes various people, but thinking about kings, you think of maybe Prince Charles, who is the future king, or you think of Prince William, perhaps. Maybe when you hear the word king, you think of the dysfunctions of the royal family. Um, I don't know who has uh, seen The Crown uh, on Netflix, particularly this last season of it was quite controversial. Um, and even more recently, maybe who saw uh, the interview with Oprah? Uh, who knows? But that might come to mind when you hear the word king. Other things, uh, battles conquests, empire, lavish processions, horses, golden carriages, Land Rover cars with tinted windows, castles in the highlands, power, national anthems, Buckingham Palace in all its glory, someone sitting on a throne, or maybe the power struggles that happen uh, in monarchies and in royal families. And particularly looking back over history, we can see plenty of examples of that. So lots of things might come to mind when you think of the word king. But I'm pretty sure one of the things that would not come to your mind uh, is a donkey. <laughs> and that's uh, what we've heard in our passage today. That's what we've heard uh, Tony reads to us. And it's really interesting, like this key moment in Scripture, this key moment in the Scriptures, uh, in the Gospels, at the start um, of, of the week that would ultimately lead to Jesus' death on the cross, 
we have quite a number of verses that are dedicated to explaining a donkey. I uh, came across a poem by the, the poet Mary Oliver. Um, Charlie absolutely loves uh, Mary Oliver and I've uh, dabbled in a few of her poems. Um, and one of Mary Oliver's poem, uh, poems helps, us, uh, helps introduce us uh, to this unlikely character on Palm Sunday. Uh, the poem is called The Poet Thinks About a Donkey. And as I say, it's written by Mary Oliver. And this is what it says. On the outskirts of Jerusalem, the donkey waited. Not especially brave or filled with understanding, he stood and waited. How horses turned out into the meadow leap with delight. How doves released from their cages clatter away, splashed with sunlight. But the donkey, tied to a tree as usual, waited. Then he let himself be led away. Then he let the stranger mount. Never had he seen such crowds. And I wonder if he at all imagined what was to happen. Still, he was what he had always been, small, dark, obedient. I hope finally he felt brave. I hope finally he loved the man who rode so lightly upon him. As he lifted one dusty hoof and stepped as he had to forward. So that's a little introduction to uh, the character of the donkey who we've heard about in today's passage. Um, let me share just uh, from another passage of scripture which links directly to this story in the Gospels. Um, and that book is the book of Zechariah. And Zechariah was one of the prophets that we read uh, in the Old Testament. Um, Zechariah shares lots of visions and lots of dreams that connect with uh, Israel's history, um, but also shares visions and dreams that connect to the coming Messiah. Uh, particularly in chapters 9 to 11 of Zechariah, um, we see uh, a description of a humble messianic king who is riding on, guess what, a donkey uh, into the new Jerusalem, establishing God's kingdom over the nations. Um, so let's read this text. And remember, this text was written long before uh, Jesus was on earth, long before the scene that we've just heard read from the Gospel of Mark. So Zechariah 9, at verses 9 and 10. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots of Ephraim, and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. He, his rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. This is an amazing part of the Old Testament, which uh, foretells of Jesus, foretells of this very moment that we see in the Gospel of Mark, where Jesus enters Jerusalem on a donkey. So what's the fascination with this donkey? It's really interesting. I almost think that, that Jesus is creating a little bit of theatre here, 
Uh, not only is it a fulfillment of the prophecy that we've just read from Zechariah, but it stands in stark contrast with the context of that time. So remember, this was a part of the world where the Roman Empire uh, was very much present. Uh, Roman rule, uh, brutal force, uh, horse-drawn chariots, marching armies demonstrating their power. So entering Jerusalem on a donkey in the last days of Jesus's life completely flips any understanding of kingdom, of rule, of reign uh, on its head. Uh, if I'm honest, there's part of me that is quite impressed by show and procession. Um, speaking of the royal family, um, I just so happened uh, to find myself in London uh, when Will and Kate got married, um, whenever that was, back in um, 2010, some, something like that. Um, and there I was on the, the, um, the mall um, with thousands of other people. And it was an amazing atmosphere. And there was amazing processions of horses. There was amazing processions of, of cars. There was a flyover of planes. And of course, there was the chariot with Will and Kate uh, in there. And there's something of this which was impressive. But riding in on a donkey, uh, Jesus' message was clear that he consciously wanted to say that his leadership was not about any of that stuff. It was not about domination and it was not about power. Jesus's leadership and his kingdom was gonna be about servanthood and humility. So I guess the challenge exists. Does the church today reflect something of Jesus the Saviour riding on a donkey. If you look at Western Christianity, it's pretty clear that in many cases it does not reflect that in the slightest. Who or what are the things that impress us? Uh, would we notice the, the modern day equivalent of the person riding into Leith, uh, riding into Edinburgh on a donkey? Uh, would you notice the person going by in the bashed up car? Or would you notice the Land Rovers with the blacked out windows zooming past really quickly? And there's another challenge here as well, because although this story was 2000 years ago in the Gospel of Mark, when Jesus was on earth, Jesus still comes to us um, on a donkey today. Jesus comes to us in the places and in the ways that we least expect him to do so. Um, Jesus comes to us in places of humility. Uh, Jesus comes to us in the eyes of those in our world uh, who live in poverty. Uh, Jesus comes to us in the tears of those who are suffering in our world. So Palm Sunday, Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. It reminds us that we as the people of God are part of an altogether very different reign, authority, kingdom and leadership. I'd like to uh, finish um, just by showing you a video. And this is a video that I probably saw about 15 years ago or so. Um, and it's a, it's a video which is an adaptation of a sermon by a US pastor called Dr. S.M. Lockridge. And it has uh, imagery from the, the movie you might remember from a number of years ago, The Passion of the Christ. And it reminds us of some of the attributes of Jesus, some of the attributes of the king that we worship. 
So God, be- God bless you uh, this week in the run up to Easter. God bless you as you watch this video now. Um, may you experience something of Jesus, something of the King this holy week. God bless. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unborn. He regards the age, he rewards the diligent, and he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. Is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You see, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Tyler couldn't find any fault in him. Terror couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah! Sin was great, your love was great, so 
for Palm Sunday, uh, the beginning of Holy Week. I had hoped that we might be able to record this in the church garden, because I think the church garden shows us something of Easter. Um, we've got bulbs that we planted that are now daffodils um, waving in the wind. Um, we've got pallets that were being thrown away, which have become benches to sit on. We've got old tires that were being thrown away which have become tubs for flowers that are burgeoning. So a picture for us of Holy Week, perhaps, in our church garden. But there's too much wind, so we're in the church. I wonder if, like me, sometimes you feel your prayers have become just a lot of the same words about the same things. So I've tried to think a little bit differently about how we pray and bring things to God today. Lord Jesus Christ, we come praising you and rejoicing as those crowds did on that first Palm Sunday. We think of them welcoming you as the Prince of Peace. And we want to hold that picture of you in our hearts and minds as we pray. Lord, we realise that in your life on earth you were often surrounded by crowds. You were surrounded by crowds eagerly listening to your teaching, by hungry crowds that you fed, by sick crowds who needed your healing and by hostile crowds who rejected you and didn't want you as Prince of Peace. Lord Jesus, we read that you had compassion on the crowds and that you saw them as sheep without a shepherd and that you had come as the Good Shepherd for all these different kinds of crowds. Lord, in our world, we see many crowds. We see crowds on the street crying for justice and fair treatment. We see crowds mourning lives lost through violence on our streets. We see crowds turning out, honouring a year of a pandemic and the lives that have been lost and the lives that have been given in, in treating others. We see crowds in other countries looking for their laws to be upheld and the results of their elections to stand and we see them being violently suppressed in places like Myanmar and Uganda. Lord, we see crowds fleeing war in Syria and Yemen and other places and those same crowds suffering from famine and at the mercy of the pandemic as it spreads to them. We bring all these crowds to you for your compassion, your care and your justice. 
Lord, we know there are also many crowds that we do not see on our streets very often because they are working tirelessly in our hospitals, care homes, clinics, schools, shops, bin lorries and delivery vans. We give you thanks for each one of them, for their dedication that keeps us safe. We bring them to you, knowing that while to us they are nameless, each one is known to you. Lord Jesus, you have called us to be your instruments in this world. And so we pray that you will make us instruments of your peace. We ask that where there is hatred, we will so love. Where, where there is injury, we will bring pardon. Where there is doubt, we can encourage faith. Where there is despair, we may bring hope. Where there is darkness, we may bring light. Where there is sadness, we may bring joy. And so, Lord, we pray that in the week ahead, as we begin to walk through this Holy Week, in company with you, we may bring comfort and love to all we meet. Amen. We come now to the end of our service. I hope that you've been encouraged by our time of worship and challenged by the teaching from God's Word. You're welcome to join us later today on Zoom at 6pm where you'll have the opportunity to discuss today's passage in more detail. This is a busy week in the church's calendar as we're at the start of Holy Week. There are a number of online events and services taking place, including a return to church on Easter Sunday. If you don't receive our weekly emails and would like to find out how to access these services, then please contact our administrator Liz by emailing liz at mustardseededinburgh.org. You can also find out information on our website www.mustardseededinburgh.org and on our Facebook page. I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone involved in putting this service together. I hope that you all have a good week and can join in with some of our Holy Week events. Take time this week to reflect on our passage. Jesus is our King and although he didn't arrive in splendour, his journey on a humble donkey reminds us that we are part of a different kingdom and as his people we are called to serve him and share the good news of his life, death and resurrection. I'd like to close now with a few verses from Numbers chapter 6. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favour and give you his peace. Amen.